All right, implementing interventions based on antecedents, okay, modification of antecedents. So when we're implementing interventions based on antecedents, we're modifying things that happen before the behavior. All right, so these aren't consequences. They're not reinforcement. It's not punishment, okay? They're manipulations before the behavior occurs. So we're preparing for this behavior to occur and we're adjusting something before it happens, okay? And that's the entire idea of modif modifying antecedents, okay, um, to adjust behavior. So they occur before the behavior. They're preventative, right? Uh, consequence interventions that happen after are what? Reactive. So our two major ones, okay, are motivating operations and discriminative stimuli. Remember, motivating operations come before DSD, okay? Motivating operations increase or decrease the value of a reinforcer. So they're going to make you want something or they're going to make you not want something, okay? They're going to alter the value of the consequence, basically. So they're going to abolish or establish the stimuli. The discriminative stimuli is going to evoke that behavior, right? And it's going to signal reinforcement is available. It's going to signal something is available, right? Because you might want something. You might want whatever, uh, you know, you think you're going to get uh, for doing the behavior. But without an SD, okay, there's nothing signaling that it's available. So the SD signals the reinforcement's available. The motivating operation just alters the value, okay? Motivating operation makes you want. Discriminative stimuli says, yes, this is available, or no, this is not available. Two very important concepts that you want to make sure you understand at a fundamental level, okay? They're going to impact a lot of questions and a lot of things you do as an RBT, okay? So let's get to a question. Your client engages in self-stimulatory behavior. Recently, your client turns off the lights in the room every 10 minutes. What is the best example of an antecedent intervention for turning off the lights? All right, so what are we looking for? We're looking for an intervention that occurs before the behavior happens, okay? So any answer choice where the behavior happens and then we react is going to be wrong. We need a choice where we're doing something before the client turns off the light. So A, every time your client turns off the lights, make them turn the lights on 10 times, all right? So this is a type of consequence, okay? So why is it wrong? Well, our reaction is happening after the behavior already occurred, okay? So it's a consequence. It can't be an antecedent. B, when your client turns off the lights, remove them from the room. Again, timeout procedure, a consequence, a punishment. It's reactive. Therefore, what? Not an antecedent. It can't be correct. We're looking for something that happens before the behavior. C, deliver reinforcement when your client doesn't turn off the lights. Again, just a consequence, right? Whatever we're doing, our manipulation, our modification needs to occur before the behavior. D, place yourself in front of the light switches when you are in that room. Yes, right? You are putting yourself in a position to prevent that behavior from occurring, okay? You're placing yourself strategically to stop that behavior from happening, okay? If your client is a hair puller, you might put your hair up. If your client is a biter or a scratcher, you might wear long sleeves. You're doing things, okay, in anticipation of the behavior happening. So D, you're doing something in anticipation of those light switches being turned off and on, okay? So antecedent interventions occur before the behavior. Continuing, okay? Still, motivating operations increase or decrease value, establishing or abolishing the reinforcer stimuli, okay? So establishing, it makes it more valuable, makes you want it. Abolishing, okay, that should be an A. Abolishing makes it less valuable, right? So I want it more or I don't want it more, okay? We're manipulating these motivation motivations, okay, to impact the uh, consequence and affect the behavior, all right? And remember, our, our four-term contingency, our three-term is here, SD, response, consequence. When we put an MO, it becomes a four-term. The MO becomes before the SD, right? And then you have your response and your consequence. Question, you are struggling to find a strong reinforcer for your client. During observation, you see that they love playing with the fire truck. You ask your client's mom to withhold the fire truck so the client only has access during session. What best describes this type of modification? So you've been looking for something that's gonna reinforce your client that your client's willing to work for. And finally, they start playing with this fire truck what they love, okay? So you're like, okay, maybe I can use this, okay, as motivation to work. But in order to do that, I need to manipulate, 
okay? The clients want for that. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to withhold it. So when you're there, they know, oh, yes, finally, I have access to the fire truck. And hopefully the motivation has increased. So what is this called when you're withholding something to increase motivation or alter the motivation? Is it satiation, deprivation, SD manipulation, or reinforcer assessment? Well, we're not assessing a reinforcer here, right? We're trying to increase the motivation, but we're not assessing multiple reinforcers, okay? We're just looking at the fire truck. SD manipulation, we're not manipulating SDs, okay? We're manipulating MOs, okay? When you're withholding, right, or giving access um, to alter the value, you're manipulating the motivation, okay? So we've got satiation and deprivation. Satiation would be you get the stimuli so much that you no longer want it. Okay, you satiated on it. So if you eat a ton of chocolate chip cookies, you might satiate on those chocolate chip cookies and no longer want the cookies. Deprivation is the opposite. You don't get enough of it, so you really want it. Okay, you're deprived of uh, cookies or you're in the desert and you're deprived of water. Okay, and your motivation to drink water increases, increases. Okay, so satiation is too much. Deprivation is too little. When you're withholding, you are depriving. Satiation and deprivation are manipulating MOs. All right, antecedent interventions occur before the behavior. Keep reiterating it, okay? You wanna say it over and over until it sticks in your head, all right? Now let's look at SDs, discriminative stimuli. Antecedent stimuli that have stimuli control over a behavior that was reinforced in the past in the presence of the antecedent stimuli. Long technical way to say that your SD or your command, okay, in the past, right, the behavior was reinforced in the presence of the SD, making that SD have stimulus control over the behavior, which is why when you say touch green, your client touches green, because in the past, responding to, to touch green by touching green has produced reinforcement. And that is the entire idea of the SD. It's signaling that, hey, reinforcement is available if you respond to this discriminative stimuli or the SD. So you'll hear it as an SD, an instruction, or a command, okay? It comes right before the behavior. So question, you're on a date at a fancy steakhouse. You normally order the salmon, but the waiter just told you there's a special on the ribeye tonight. You love ribeye, so you end up ordering the ribeye. What represents the SD for ordering the ribeye? Remember, when you walked in that steakhouse, okay, maybe you wanted ribeye, you wanted salmon, okay? Um, but maybe you wanted ribeye, you just didn't know if it was available. When that waiter said, there's a special on ribeye, that was the signal that, hey, ordering the ribeye is gonna produce reinforcement because now you're gonna get the ribeye. So what is the SD? Is it the menu? Well, the menu, um, as far as we know, is not part of this scenario. And as far as we know, the ribeye is not typically the special, is not on the menu. So the menu is not signaling that ribeye is available. What is signaling the ribeye is available? It's a question you need to ask yourself. B, there is no salmon available. Well, we don't know anything about the salmon other than you normally order it, okay? So B is out, right? Don't try to fill in the blanks. Just use the information they give you in the question. C, the waiter telling you the ribeye special. Yes, right? Only when the waiter said the ribeye was available, that they had a special, were you signaled, okay, that, hey, I can actually order the ribeye. So the SD was the waiter giving you the ribeye special. The behavior was you ordering the ribeye. Consequence was you received the ribeye. D, you love ribeye? No, right? Um, that is not, that didn't signal anything. You might love ribeye, but again, you might love sushi and they might not serve, serve sushi here. So what you love and what you like has no impact on the SD or the availability of that item. Only when you get the SD is it signaled that it's available. So hopefully you go through that question a few times and understand why the SD is the SD and what makes that the discriminative stimuli. All right, more preventative measures. You can offer choices. Do you wanna work for this or this? Do you wanna do math or science? Do you wanna play sorry or monopoly? So choices are excellent antecedent interventions, okay? Prompting is an antecedent intervention. Remember it goes M-O-S-D, prompt, right? Response consequence. So remember that prompt is an antecedent because it comes before the behavior. 
So prompting is an antecedent intervention that you're going to use all the time. You're evoking a behavior, right? Priming, so telling your client what's about to come, okay? Uh, you know, we're about to do this, or you have, you know, two minutes left on the game. You're giving them information on what is to come in the future. High probability request sequence, you're trying to gain momentum. You give them a bunch of easy instructions, touch your nose, clap your hands, and then you deliver the difficult one. Touch your nose, clap your hands, watch three times three. You're building momentum. There's a high probability of them doing the easy responses leading to momentum for the hard response. Non-contingent reinforcement, you're reinforcing um, before the behavior occurs, you're, reinforce, you're reinforcing with no contingency in place. And then time delay uh, typically is prompting, right? You might prompt immediately at first, and then the next time you might wait three seconds to prompt, okay? Give them time to respond, so that is a time delay. Okay, so all kind of different preventative measures, all kind of different antecedent interventions you can use as RBTs. You want to get really good at preventative antecedent interventions. Okay, once you get familiar with your client and you know what behavior is coming and you can anticipate it, you can re get really good at manipulating antecedents to really kind of control what's happening during session. And that's how we get to behavior change. Okay, antecedents are very important. Question, what situation best represents priming? So what is priming? Priming is giving information to your client, letting them know what's coming in the future. So you're priming them, you're setting them up, okay, um, for what's about to come. A, you're working on potty training with your client. You give them water throughout session to encourage them to use the bathroom, okay? Well, you're manipulating what? You're manipulating their need to go to the bathroom, but you're not priming them. Priming would be you're working on potty training and you tell your client five minutes before you go to the bathroom that you're going to the bathroom. That's giving them new information, letting them know what's coming. So A is wrong. B, your client places their chin on the back of the chair. Before the next session, you take the back of the chair off. This is an antecedent manipulation, right? Before the behavior occurs, but you're not priming them, okay? You're not giving them any new information. C, you tell your client to wait five minutes before eating their food, okay? Uh, that's an SD, right? Wait is an SD, okay? So it's a command, right? But it's not priming, right? D, when your client has one minute left on break, you tell them this. Perfect, right? You're giving them new information. Hey, you have one minute left on break in preparation for what? For their break being over. 